So I did my sermon on forgiveness, and before I talk about it, I wanted to give a little short backstory. God literally just laid this on my heart to share this. So um, about a year back, I was literally at my dinner table, and I was, I was thinking about the whole fine arts thing, because Ava told me about it, and I was like, and I was like, man, God, I really struggle with forgiveness, and he's like, okay, that's what you're going to preach about, so I'm like, <laughs> okay, so, and the reason I wanted to share this with you guys is because your biggest weakness can be so, become someone else's biggest strength. But you have to surrender that to God. Yeah. Because Amen. I know that, like, I, I've been in certain moments where I've been going through some stuff, and someone speaks something, and that thing changes my life. Yeah. So I just wanted to encourage you today, whatever you're struggling with, surrender that to God, and it'll change your life and someone else's life. Amen. Okay, let's get started. So, um, well, I already said that. I had my sermon on forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is defined as a decision to release resentment from someone. But when it comes to forgiveness, it's not just about forgetting about what someone did, but it is about releasing or loosing something. Forgiveness and forgetting are not the same. Forgiveness is done by faith. Because you can forget about a situation where someone hurt you, right? For a while. But as soon as a certain memory or a certain topic is brought up and all that pain starts to come back, you start to realize that maybe that wasn't true forgiveness. I want you to imagine this. Imagine your life as if it is a rope. And this rope is endless. And at the beginning of the rope, there is a small inch of red tape. Okay, that one inch represents your life on this earth. And the rest represents your eternity. That's, the, that's your 90 years, that one inch, if we get there. So why would you waste even a moment of doing something not for the kingdom of God? We have all done things we regret, right? And we hate when others hold that grudge against us because your past is not you. That's right. And yet we still choose to do the same to others. The person you're struggling to forgive might have done something just horrible. But think about how Christ has forgiven us. We have broken his word. We have broken his trust time and time again. And he forgives us, but yet we still choose not to forgive others. Matthew 6, 12 says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Some people have the mindset of, well, if they treated me like that, then why can't I do the same to them? Some things can be extremely hard to forgive. We become very vulnerable to others who have hurt us. Their words and their actions affect us, and that's a normal feeling. But true forgiveness is what you do in spite of what you feel. Right. Yeah. Amen. It goes back to 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. The verse that everybody seems to know. If we are truly casting our cares on God as he has told us to do, then that means everything. So many people are bound right now by lack of forgiveness. If we are supposed to be like Christ, we have to forgive. We have to forgive others just as he has forgiven us. Forgiveness is not optional, but vital in our spiritual lives. Good. Good. Yeah. We can also find ourselves so many times in an all-do-it-later mindset or a procrastination like mine when it comes to forgiveness. True. But what if your grudge could be the very thing stopping you from growing in your faith? Yeah. Because we, we wonder, we sit and wonder, why God, why can't I feel your presence, but you won't let that thing go that's coming in you. Preach it. Yeah. Ephesians 4.26 says, In your anger, do not sin. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Good. Something that's said a lot in our culture and even in the church is life is short. And I agree, it is. So why would you not forgive someone? Sometimes we say we want to serve God, but our actions don't reflect. Psalm 39.5 says, You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. Serving God requires your all, and forgiveness involves that. 
The reason you're wrestling in other sin is because you're waiting to forgive because you need more time. We are promised so many things in the Bible, but more time is not one of them. Yeah. By not forgiving, we're settling for so much partialness in our spiritual lives. May I submit to you today that your life on this earth is a lot like that road. Your life is short. Forgiveness should not be optional. Our life is lukewarm when forgiveness is not active constantly. So let it go and give it to God because he is bigger than the problem. Mm 